Good morning, afternoon and evening everyone. Welcome to my Game Week 13 team selection video. I'm recording this on Friday morning and it is a Friday deadline so obviously have to get this out to you guys before the pressers on Friday. I don't think there's anything much we learn. I think Slot chimed in yesterday. He mentioned that the injuries to Konate and Bradley are still being assessed. But there are few Liverpool accounts who usually get the info. They're saying the injury to Konate isn't too bad. But a lot to unpack today. Let's jump right into it. First up, let's look at the previous week. So I had 61 points the previous week, up to an overall rank of 2.69. That's about 2.7 million now, which is, funnily enough, the best rank of the season so far. Flecken chipped in with a clean sheet, which was huge. Gabriel Mikalenko also contributed. But in attack, it was very barren with just Bo Salah bringing home the bacon with a double return over there. Nobody really else did anything. Larson was the only one I stuck on the bench. So I've been on the middle end. I haven't had high end of the variance, I think, by sell, by like not having Salah over the last few weeks. But what's happened is Haaland has been heavily outscored by the likes of Cunha, etc. And potentially another midfield option I could have gotten. Saka is obviously back on the radar this week. So rather than talk about the players individually now, let's talk about the week that's coming ahead. I don't think you guys know about the week that's gone so far. We're limited for time. So let's jump right in now. First up captaincy matrix now for the next few weeks and i want to talk to you guys first up about game weeks 13 to 15. now 13 obviously i'm not going to captain harlan but now let's look at 14 and 15. 14 i think it would be between palmer away to southampton harlan at home to forest palmer is a very good captain away to southampton may go big but i think in a home game i'd always fancy the city player you could make an argument though that forest defensively have been much better than Southampton so Palmer is the potentially the best captain option there anyway I would say it's pretty close but leaning slightly towards Haaland in the home game and likely after a loss to Liverpool then after that we have next weekend's fixture where it gets a bit trickier Haaland has Palace away Saka has Fulham away Salah Everton away Palmer Tottenham away now if I don't have Haaland over here where would I go probably Palmer away to Tottenham they have Foster in goal. They may not have the centre-back pairing. Usually has goals in that fixture in the derby. So I don't mind that. If not, I would potentially be going Haaland. Now, that means that two out of three of the next week, I would potentially be going for Haaland captain, who could be a differential. Now, let's look at 16. 16, Manchester United at home, I think, is decent for Haaland. But then when you have Salah home to Fulham, Palmer home to Brentford, these are a little bit better. Obviously, it depends on how Amorim is doing at that point of time. 17, again, it's a little bit tricky. I don't fancy Haaland away to Villa. Saka's away to Palace. Palmer away to Everton. Not great. The outstanding fixture there is obviously Isak home to Ipswich, who I won't own. That being said, there is a potential. If I have, I'll show you guys in my transfer plans. If I have a lot of transfers just rolled over that time, I could potentially do a hokey cokey in 16, 17. Bring, go Highland to Isak and then bring him back around 18. Something to consider for the plans I'll show you guys later on. Then from 18... I would think but 18, you could say, is a bit debatable. You could go Saka or Salah. Ipswich Leicester are potentially better fixtures than Everton at home for Haaland. But from 19, 20, etc., I think Haaland is pretty clear in terms of captaincy. That's when, well, 19, you could go Palmer. Ipswich, that's not too bad. Salah, Manchester United in 20, again, not too bad. So, Palmer, then two home games. So, you can always find, actually, alternatives to Haaland. You don't have to go there. But, again, we talk about ceiling. Haaland has it. Fixture difficulty now, I've increased the horizon to 8 game weeks that sees us through the entire festive period. Arsenal are right on top, which is why I don't like not owning Saka. Chelsea is second, which is why I'll pretty much Palmer is an easy hold. Liverpool drift a little bit towards the bottom, but are we going to get rid of any of their players when they're title favourites right now? I don't think so. Wolves, Bournemouth, Brighton, great fixtures all the way through the festive period. You need representation there. City's fixtures are getting better in the second half than in the first. Uh, the usual projections from Sertap, and let's just skim through them really quick. Now, if you're in the market for a defender, in the premium bracket, you see Guardiola's up there, but I wouldn't go near that. I think Trent is interesting now at 6.9. In the Arsenal defense, Timber isn't on here because of limited data, but I think Timber's projections will be probably be there or there about Saliba, plus or minus 2. In the cheap bracket, you could look at Gusto, though I just don't think he's reliable in this festive period. I think if you're... The Brighton guys are not there. I think it would probably be a Brighton defender for me, Van Heck. Midfielders, Salah is still the big dog. 
Palmer second. Saka's projections have crept up massively from the last one. The fixtures get better. The right side triangle is now complete with Odegaard back. So Saka obviously pound for pound for 10 million 48.6 is a very good projection. Boomer's numbers obviously have dropped now. 38.6 but still healthy and as Pras mentioned on the last spot. Bumo will likely be playing in the centre forward role when they go to a back three in these tougher fixtures, maybe away to Villa, away to Chelsea. So that's something to consider. Mid-price midfield bracket is a bit barren. Johnson is there. I don't see Bowen very highly on this. I'll have to speak to Serta. I do think Bowen should be up there as well. And you're like under six mids, it's still Semenyo, Rogers, McNeil, etc. Although the Fulham guys seem to have tapered off. Haaland at 56.1 is still the top projected forward by some distance. Then you have Isak, Watkins, Solanke and Jackson. The mid-price guys, you have Wood, Kunia. I think with Wood, I wouldn't be so interested. I think Kunia's numbers need to be a bit higher over here. Strand Larsen at 5.6, just marginally behind Kunia, but now there's almost a 1.5 billion price difference. They aren't as bullish on Joao Pedro as perhaps all of us are. He's just at 29.8, but again, that's because of limited data for this season. Now, if you are looking to sell Haaland, let's have a look at some of the replacements here. And I think now, for let's say, look at the period for game week 13 to 18. That is a longer horizon. I think Isak is right on top. But what's interesting is if you should look at the horizon for a shorter period, for the next two game weeks, you don't see Isak in the top three as well because they have Palace. And Liverpool. Naturally, there you have Jackson with Villa and Southampton. So if you potentially have transfers, you could get Jackson for a couple of weeks then switch around to Isak for the captaincy. I like that. Watkins doesn't interest me as much. I think there will be some rotation with those Brentford and Southampton home games quite close. Solanke also, I'm not as convinced by now in the system which they are playing. Kunia, all the, good all the way through this period. I think, again, for the short term, you don't see Kunia in there, 14 to 16. But then as soon as you bring in 17 and 18 into the period, that's when they have the Leicester and Ipswich games. That's when Kunia is really good. So you could potentially wait a week or two on Kunia is what these projections say. But, of course, it's down to your reading of the player. If you think he's red-hot form, you get him in now. The Rob T numbers for this week, projected goals and clean sheet odds, as we mentioned on the pod. Brighton right on top, which is why we're all quite big on Joao Pedro. Chelsea 2.1, Spurs 2.2, Arsenal 2.1, Liverpool, Man City. Liverpool odds obviously adjusted now for poor Man City have been Brentford at 2. So again, some good high-scoring fixtures expected over here. In terms of clean sheet, Arsenal are clear favourites. Brighton, Brentford thereabouts, Forest, Manchester United, but not much else in terms of clean sheet potential over here. And again, another visual. Brighton projected to score the most goals. But the problem there, even if you're thinking about the captaincy, is they often share their goals. You could score three, maybe Pedro gets a goal or an assist. He's very good, but again, they have a team of very good players. Other people can also contribute. With Spurs, where do you go in terms of captaincy? I don't think any of us have. Like, nobody's going to go so lanky. Arsenal, I think away from home, I don't like captaining the players as much. They still get points, but going like big, 16 to 20. May not happen, though I do remember Saka went big in this fixture last season with a couple of goals and an assist. Chelsea Villa is an interesting one. Now, what has happened with Villa is over the last, we always have these things that they play a high line and somebody in the comment also mentioned this. They haven't necessarily been doing that in all of their away matches this season. I remember the games against Liverpool and Spurs, they were actually pretty good. They were always done on the counter-attacks. They are suffering in these transitions, something that Emery also mentioned, so I don't know if they'll necessarily be as open against Chelsea. They might play a deeper block. Something to think about. I like Wissa as captaincy against Leicester. There's a good shout over there. Liverpool again, 1.85. I think I do expect them to score 2-3 goals at least. It depends on how Guardiola sets up. He does, does he even have the personnel to park the bus anymore? Play defensively without Rodri in midfield? I just don't think so. Again, clean sheets. Arsenal away to West Ham does look the best bet. I think they're the best odds for clean sheets over the next five to eight game weeks. So if you're investing in the market, I think an Arsenal defender, either Rhea or Timber, looks a good pickup. You wouldn't be buying Forest right now. With United, there's uncertainty on the wing backs. Brighton, you go Van Heck, but none of the other defenders have upside. It feels a bit boring. Now, a plug for Sleeper. If you guys have been watching our content for now, you know about the Sleeper app. So we run a free to play Pick'em League. You just need to pick the result of every match 
win, draw or loss. And the monthly winners get a prize. The three top guys in our Discord get a prize. The yearly winners get a prize. It's quite simple and free to play. You can download the Sleeper app using the first QR code and join our pick, free to enter Pick'em League on the right. Some games do look like bankers this week. You would expect Brighton, Brentford, Forest, Arsenal, Chelsea. Chelsea, I don't really know. 56 maybe is a bit generous. United and Spurs, at least or at least five predictable results. is a good week, I think, in terms of predictions. Even Wolves, Bournemouth, I think the absence of Semenyo might weaken them a bit. Wolves just seem a bit on the up now. It's a good week to get in. And next week, next month, in fact, there are about eight game weeks, I think, in the next month, or so maybe even, I think, six. So, great time to join. Now, let's talk captaincy. And it's a very interesting one this week. Let's look at some projections now. The ensemble, which is a mix of the projections from the various sites, has Palmer out on top by some distance, I might add. 7.16, Salah 6.4, Bumo, and then Saka. Fix has Palmer, Bumo, Vissa. So Salah is at fourth, 20% behind. Hub has Salah top, Palmer second, Wood third, Saka fourth, Haaland all the way up in fifth. Scout has Palmer, Salah, Bruno, Sun. FPL Review and Tokwam are quite similar. They both have Palmer and Bumo ahead of Salah and Saka. So Haaland is what rated what 8th or ninth now on Tokwam's algorithm. That's interesting. He's dropped massively. Kunia features there as well, just behind Haaland. Nobody's very big on Joao Pedro, as you can see, but the projections are generally favored towards Palmer, but as we discussed in the last video, projections give more weightage to long-term data than short-term. I think short-term, I think you would probably bump Salah's projections up a little bit over here. Now the watch list for game week 13. I haven't updated the goalkeepers. In defense, I think now with Trent Fit, Trent and Timber are potentially the best premium options. Nuri with the fourth yellow card, still a good pick. Sub-5, there's also Van Heck. Maybe West Ham if you wait next week. The fullbacks do get a bit forward. In midfield, Palmer, Saka, the top premium options. Then you have Semenyo, who is suspended this week, I know, but good fixtures after. Bowen's fixtures are very good after this week as well. Then you have Mitoma, who I think is potentially the most nailed Brighton midfielder, but we might see some rotation there. Forwards, Jackson, Joao Pedro. You guys don't really need me to talk about that. Vardy is an interesting one. I've put him in there just because of the new manager bounce at Leicester. The problem is, though, this is a very congested period. I don't know if he's going to be able to start three games a week. Something we need to monitor, but that's what the watch list is for. Then you have Kunia and Isak. But realistically, I think there's four of those guys. And as usual, Salah and Haaland, not on this list. Now, let's talk about my team. I've already made one free transfer. I went early on Raul to Jao Pedro. I still have one left, and that leaves me 0 0.8 million in the bank. It's not Fabianski, it's Flecken in goal. I always make that one error. Aitnuri, Gabriel, Mikalenko, Salah, Bumo, Rogers, and Palmer. Haaland, Joao Pedro, and Larson with Semenyo, Greaves, and Lewis on the bench. So the obvious weak spot over here is a third defender. I'm currently playing Mikalenko. It could be Greaves. I don't know if Greaves will start. Probably chuck Greaves in there with Mikalenko first, sir. But it's a bit of a train wreck, that spot. I don't really expect much points from it this week. Now, there are a few parts I could take now. And this is a big decision now this week because if I don't lose Haaland this week, it's going to be difficult to lose him the weeks after. So let's look at my various options now. First option, obviously, is to keep Haaland, do Lewis to Timber. And that sort of gives the team more of a robust feel. You double up on the Arsenal defense. You have Haaland in. 0, 0.0 in the bank, though, leaves limited flexibility for future moves. Though I could downgrade Bumo the week after. I'm still playing Rodgers away to Chelsea, which isn't great, but no hit. And I get in Timber, who I think is a good asset in terms of potential at both ends of the pitch for this festive period. Now, the alternate route, sell Haaland for a hit now, in which case, Haaland out to Jackson, Rodgers out to Saka. So it will be the similar team as you saw earlier, but now in place of Rodgers, there's Saka. And instead of Haaland, there's either Kunia or Jackson, whichever one I've still not decided. As you can see, I've got two different images in those slides over there. The thing is with over there, I'll probably get Kunia this week. I could get Jackson then for last in the next week once I know. 
that he's not suspended for the Southampton fixture, it would be very frustrating. So I would actually probably do it in this order, not Jackson. Now, let's look at the comparison now, game week 13. And let's assume now I transfer Jackson in, not Kunia, because again, the order will just change. It might be this week or the next week, or how I do it. I could buy Kunia this week, and the Jackson the week after, Jackson this week, or Kunia the week after, in case I don't want to go too hard on Bulls Bournemouth. They're not that bad after all. And the Kunia option, I'll be doubling up with the Wolves forward. So look at the team on the left. Obviously, no hit is the upside over there. But then apparently, the difference obviously is quite clear. It's Haaland and Rogers versus Saka and Jackson. There's no captaincy difference over there. I also get to keep Lewis for later on when he has some decent fixtures. Now, game week 14. For the Haaland team, let's say I do Bumo to Bowen. I could obviously choose to roll the transfer also, but there's no other prior commitments. I think I like Bowen's fixture run about that time. He's got Leicester, Wolves, Bournemouth, and Brighton when Bumo has Villa, Newcastle, Chelsea, and Forest. Now, what I would do for the no Haaland team, I would do whichever Jackson or Cunha I don't have. Let's say I do Cunha in for Strand Larson or Jackson in for Strand Larson. So the difference then at this point would become Haaland cap in the Haaland team, Palmer cap in the other team, and then you would have Rogers up against who here? So, but yeah, so Rogers goes up against Cunha, and Bowen goes up against Bumo, and Semenyo also comes in there. Yeah, so sorry, so Semenyo is basically competing over there with whom? Saka. Yeah, that's a big one. I keep forgetting Saka's in there, right? So again, Haaland captaincy needs to make up a lot of points. I would need Rogers also to bring home the bacon, and would need Bumo not to do much over here. I alternatively could also just play Semenyo and bench Bumo. That's also an option which sort of would probably equalize the whole thing. So let's just remove that from it. So it would be Bowen also comes into the picture. Either way, you guys get the picture. It's a bit confusing for me to explain who versus who. Now, game week 15, the Haaland team would again roll. Haaland captain. In this case, it would probably be Palmer captain away to Tottenham. Semenyo now would be starting in the Haaland team, not starting in the no Haaland team. You'd probably play Kunia over him. Saka, again, is the main difference against Haaland, but again, you're getting Haaland cap, which really needs to come through. More and more is what I'm realizing, what I would be relying heavily, basically, on the Haaland team. And again, this video is to help me with my decision, right? Haaland cap I would be relying on very heavily over the next few weeks, and also Rogers and Semenyo would be dependent heavily over the next couple of weeks, if I chose that route. A game week 16, again, the Haaland team would be rolling. There's very little flexibility in terms of transfers. So here, yeah, Haaland cap would be up against Isaac cap. And the Jackson team, I would be going Jackson to Isaac cap now for the Leicester fixtures. So Haaland cap versus Isaac cap over here. Semenyo is common over there. Bowen is up against Saka. And Pedro is up against Cunha. That's interesting. Now, again, you would fancy the right duo to do better. I'd like Isak captain at home. And Saka also, who has Everton at home that week. Bowen has Bournemouth away. Strand Larsen and Kunya could again be a big divide over there. Now, let's look at game week 17. Again, the Haaland team is rolling. Three free transfers. Again, I could change my mind at any point. Now, that's what I'm saying. I could do the Haaland Koki, Koki, Koki for Isak over here. Now, you'd have... Bowen and Semenyo up against Saka and Bumo and against Tran Larsen against Kunya. Semenyo would need to be my MVP over, over Christmas if I stuck with this strategy. And Semenyo that week has Manchester United away. So game week 17 is when this starts to get a bit dodgy. But game week 18 again, then the fixtures turn and then you're going to go back to Haaland again, right? And now there's another thinking that's playing now. I'm currently sitting at 2.6 million rank. I've given up. A lot of ground now to the other people above me in most of my leagues who have made the Haaland switch. But what's interesting is in terms of EO now at my rank. Now, this is obviously previous game week numbers. These numbers will change. Now, Saka is at 30% EO. Kunia is at 11%. Jackson is at 20%. So, I bring in these guys. They're still good differentials at my rank. I don't think many players will be owning these players. For example, Haaland is actually at 100%. So, I'm not actually gaining much from Haaland. Haaland will be a differential. In most of the mini leagues, I'm effectively chasing though. So it's a bit of both. I have to weigh up the pros and cons. I've got a bit of an idea now after going through the analysis. It does seem now I need to think about 
how much I trust Haaland with captaincy the next few weeks because that needs to come big. He needs to account for the, what the likes of Rogers, Semenyo, etc. might not be able to deliver against Saka. So going up against Saka and a premium forward and a Kunia for that period just does feel very, very scary. I think the spread of points over there relies heavily on Haaland. So, I'm still not very sure on what I'm doing. I think as of now, I am leaning towards taking the hit and going for the Kunia route. Potentially giving Jackson next week once I know he's not going to miss the Southampton fixture. But this could change. Press emphasis could change my mind. And I don't know what's the worst could happen. Haaland could blank for the next couple of games and then I accept defeat and do the transfer then. Could very well do that ultimately. But I do want to give a chance for that variance to swing my way. It may, it may not, but let's see how it goes. That's it from me this week. Any other further updates to the press conferences or any new information I will post as a comment in this video. Please like and subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed it. And let me know your suggestions in the comments. Thank you and bye for now.